this is Zach Edwards with another Stump the Creator, HG Nation. Thanks for much, so much for joining me. Everyone else, if you don't know this game, it's basically where you try to take your knowledge of this game, Historical Conquest, and try to stump me as the creator. Hi, my name is Zach Edwards, and I created Historical Conquest because I hated history when I left high school because of how it was taught. I knew there had to be a better way. So this is my better way. Okay, so now for these questions. This is a contest where you try to stump me at my own game. This one is from Connor. Connor, thanks so much for jo uh, joining us and for inserting all these questions. You're probably up to like at least two dozen questions. So thanks for being part of this. We're now up to well over 150 questions. So question number one, any tips of winning CYOC? I was, I was able to churn out about a hundred cards before I got too busy for conquest. Okay, so this is for everyone. Not exactly a stump the creator, but it's definitely um, some things to look forward to. Okay, so uh, non-biblical. I would love to have biblical in there, but because this is not just um, uh, homeschooling, this is also public schools playing this game, and a lot of other people, um, we've basically made it so that we're not doing biblical. If we do that, we're going to do it separately um, so that you can have them together, but at the same time, you buy them separately so that the schools and everyone else is able to enjoy everything of historical conquest. Um, so non-biblical, 50 years dead. Needs to be 50 years dead. Needs to be an amazing story. One that not many people hear of, um, but it has to be true also. It can't just be a myth or a cult classic about it. Uh, it actually has to be proven fact that that person did whatever you are supposing them to do. Um, be very concise in your, your information. Uh, also, the summary, the summary is very uh, is very important. Make it focus on the thing that's the most uh, amazing about them, and try to keep it as short as possible. The second thing is the ability. Make sure the ability is very catching. Though, just so you know, the ability is not going to swing much of the judges in house. So, being picked as a top twelve, it's not usually the ability we look at. We look at the the story of the person but it's the ability that will change the minds of the people voting on it as well. So that's why you want it. And most of the time, people are bringing friends and family to, to vote for them. Uh, and they're voting for their one pick, that one person's pick or entry, that one, but they're supposed to have three different picks. So you might not be going after that person's first pick, but you wanna become their second or third pick because they all get the same amount of points towards winning the, the final uh, the final number. So every vote, you get three votes. Each person that submits gets three votes, one per day, or sorry, three per day, just one entry. In that entry, you get three different people you can choose from. They cannot be the same. If they are, they're disqualified. So you always want them to be different. So if they're your friends and family, you want them to pick yours. If they're somebody else's friends and family, you want them as to pick you as number two or number three. Um, so that gives you a little more insight into doing this. Now, if you wanna catch the uh, the office eyes, you wanna get people that are well-known enough, but not well enough known that they should be in the standard pack. Yeah, that, that sounds really weird, but you don't want the easy fruit from the tree, the, the low hanging fruit that like everyone picks from. For one thing, everyone picks from them. You want to get the people that someone might know, especially a historian might know, but that's never really talked about. So those really interesting questions or uh, uh, events and people that not many people know the full story of, that's the person that you want. Because then you want to make that interesting and let everyone else know. Because we read through the summaries, and that's basically what we go off of. Don't make false changes or false claims because we will check them. Like last year, there was a few people that put in false summaries, just to make them sound really good. Don't do that. It doesn't help, it just throws out that entry. Even if it was a great pick, it would have lost to that turn. Um, so those are the, the top things I could, I could think of. And that's how it works. Okay, number two, is it illegal to reprint historical conquest cards? Like scanning a card with a printer, formatting it and printing it from a card print shop. Is it illegal? Yeah. It somewhat is. They're copyrighted. At the bottom, it actually has the, the copyright symbol. It's all rates reserved. 
um, by doing that. It is, except if you just use them for your own fun, if you have them in your own hands, no one's going to go after you. I mean, I'm not going to go after you. But uh, if you start trying to sell them or trade them with other people, yeah, they will be. Um, because that takes away the, well, it takes away what we're able to do. If all of a sudden people just started printing off their own their own cards, we would have no money to, to make more cards, to digitalize historical conquest. You'd be basically putting us out of work or out of business. And if you put us out of business, it ruins everybody's fun. So that's why we sell them because we want to have the historians on board, the illustrators on board to get these done. And then we, uh, we try to protect them so that we can continue to do that for others. And yes, it'd be nice to be able to make money, but just so you know, I make very little money off this because I keep investing it back into the company. And everyone that I talk to, all my business advisors say, stop, stop doing that. You need to make an income. I know, but it's just so much fun to do this. So I do make a small income, very small. It's not a living off of this because everything else goes back into making more cards for you, for digitalizing the game, for making a curriculum, all these different things. And at some point that might stop. But if you print them, there's no money coming into the shop and I might as well just close up shop and historical conquest goes away. So please don't do that. Okay, number three, some first edition cards mention uh, features that no longer exist. So would it be reasonable to come up with a substitution ability in its place? Yes, you can, but in the tournaments, you can't even play one of uh, 0.0 cards. So the original cards, um, those are more for collectors, collector's items. Uh, number four, Pocahontas, first edition. Again, collector's item, not to be played in, in tournaments, not really to be played in games either. You can, but just in-house. Pocahontas, first edition, allows me to free, freely trade cards with my opponent. Does this ability still apply? You can only trade if a card allows you to trade. Otherwise, you can't trade cards during a game. You want to do it after a game or before a game? Yeah, go for it. But yeah, if you try it during the game, it's actually against the rules. Um, so you can only do that during like cards like Pocahontas or Jane, John, uh, Adam Smith and such like that. Okay, number five. I am very satisfied with my $100 purchase of first edition. He has a smiling emoji. So I'm very satisfied. I have only one issue. One of the one packs, so the original packs, I decided to open. There were red print streaks on seven different cards. There are small but noticeable. Nothing to worry about. I was just wondering if this is normal for old cards like there, like these, and would they be uh, on an unopened deck? I plan on never opening these decks, just collecting them. Uh, so I can actually say that I have never seen those red lines or red uh, imperfections in it. But all I can say is they're, I, they make them very rare if it's actually in the print itself, if it's added afterwards, and you can uh, a professional could see this. Um, if it's added afterwards, it won't mean a thing. But because they are under the the um, sealant under the gloss coat, then yeah, that could actually be something significant. It's like if I printed the words upside down, that's a that's a rare, rare, very rare card. I, I've never done that before. I've never printed them also, so it's it has to be my printer. So my printer probably was running out of ink and it made a smudge in there and uh, hit those seven cards. So those cards I would consider being the rare, so the rare. Because one, the one uh, the original deck you can't buy anywhere. I did that for a limited time because people were begging me to do it. Um, and uh, yeah, so you've got probably the only copy that has those red marks. Congrats. There might be a few more, but I don't know because I've never heard of them. I've never seen them in all our days of, of playing it and printing it. Never done. So again, everyone, thank you so much for joining us on this uh, Stump the Creator. Um, we were stumped once, but, uh, I think that's it. So thank, and not from this, this video, but from the last like month, month and a half. So thanks again for joining us and we will catch you next time. Take care. Bye. 
you have any comments or questions, add them to the comments below. Otherwise, we'll see you next, uh, we'll see you tomorrow actually. Take care, bye.